Okay, this is 1.6 video lesson, um, trig and inverse values with the calculator. We haven't done inverse values, I'll explain what that is as we go along. Um, that's kind of in the next part of this lesson. Um, before we do this lesson, I want to make sure that everybody understands that exact values and more exact values, the last two lessons, um, you should be able to do those without a calculator. This lesson is with the calculator because as you notice some of these angles are strange. They don't have reference angles with the 30, 60, 45, 90, 180, all the angles that we're used to. Um, so these we're going to have to use the calculator on. You could also use trig tables, um, but with the TI graphing calculators it's much easier. All right, our notes tell us we need to be in degrees mode. So if you haven't already gotten out your calculator, go ahead and get that out. And um, if you hit the mode key, um, you'll notice that if you have a TI-83, by the way, this will look slightly different, but you should be able to find radian and degree and make sure that it's in degrees. The default here is radian. Now, this is going to be a thing that we're going to have to remember and you're going to have to remind yourself on quizzes and tests that always to check what mode you're in because that makes all the difference in the world. Okay, so make sure you're in degree mode because that's what it tells us to do on this first problem. Okay, it says, so use the calculator. We're going to evaluate cosine of 39 degrees. Now, this is pretty simple. We are going to find cosine. Right here in the middle of the calculator, we have sine, cosine, tangent. We're going to find cosine, and you're going to notice it's going to automatically open up parentheses. And we're going to type 39 and close those parentheses. All right. And we round to three decimal places just because that's the expectation on the AP Calculus test, so we get used to that, and that's a pretty standard rounding for trigonometry anyway. So 0.777. So let's write that down. And on a lot of these, you may see the, not the equal sign, but kind of like the squiggly equal sign, which means approximation. I'm not going to be real picky whether you write equals or write this or either, um, but I do want you to know this is not an exact answer. This is an approximation. Um, <coughs> okay, let's look at part B, sine of 212 degrees. Now, if we were doing this without the calculator, we would have to find the reference angle, figure out which quadrant, all of that stuff, but the reference angle here won't help us. We don't know how to, we wouldn't be able to get any further than that. And so this is where the calculator is pretty useful. We would just type in sine of 212, and as long as I'm in degrees mode and not radians mode, it's pretty simple. Now notice that the answer is negative, and I want you to think if this makes sense. Yeah, it should make sense because we're in quadrant 3 and sine is negative in quadrant 3. So the all students take calculus, you really won't need it too much for this but it, there won't be any contradictions, and that's a really good way you can check your work and reinforce what you've already learned. And also notice on this one, since there's a 9 in the fourth position, we're going to have to round here um, up, and this is a 9 too. So our answer, rounded to three decimal places, is negative 0.53. Now I'm going to go ahead and put a 0 after this, and we definitely know that the zero is not necessary, it's the same number whether it's there or not, but putting the zero here tells me that you did round to three decimal places and not just two. And again, this is an approximation, this is not an exact answer. Okay, cotangent of 56. Now if you look on your calculator, there is no cotangent button. In fact, there's no secant or cosecant button. So we're going to have to use what we know about reciprocals. Okay, so if I know how to find tangent of 56, which is pretty obvious on the calculator, I'm going to take the reciprocal. You can do all this in one step. I'm going to go ahead and write it out first, and then we're going to type it in. So it's the reciprocal of tangent of 56. So you're going to put the 1 divided by before the tangent. Okay, so let's type that in. 1 divided by tangent of 56 still degrees, and here we have 0.675 when we round to three decimal places. Okay, same thing with secant. 
1 divided by, and the reciprocal secant is cosine. So again, nice thing is here, even though this is a large angle, I do not have to deal with a reference angle. Okay, the calculator will do that part for you. So we're just going to type in 1 divided by cosine of 245. If I'm going through these steps too quickly, remember you can always rewind, you can pause, you can watch the video over again. Okay, so let's round that to three decimal places. So that's going to be negative 2.366. Alright. Okay, I'll, at this point I would like you to pause and try to do this one on your own and then watch me work it out and just confirm your answer. Okay, <coughs> cosecant. That is the reciprocal of sine. So that's 1 divided by sine of 125. So we go to type this in. And we get 1.221. And I completely expect everybody in pre-AP pre-calculus to know how to round to three decimal places. If you are not rounding here correctly, there will be points taken off for that. All right, let's go on to the next page. OK, so that's how, let me just. Over, so this whole page was exact values. This is how you take exact values with a calculator. It's pretty simple, whether it's the basic trig functions or the reciprocal. Now the inverse value has to do with going backwards. So let's explain what that means first, <coughs> and then we'll go through some examples. So theta equals, and we have a little sign to the negative one, it looks like to the negative one power, x, but what this means is not to the negative 1 power, because that would actually be reciprocal. What this means is an angle whose sine is x, okay? It means that x equals sine theta. So what you're given here is the answer, and you're going backwards and finding the angle, okay? So there are two different ways of writing this, or really three. And the way we say the sine to the negative 1 is always going to be this, arc sine. This is inverse. This is going backwards, okay? It is not taking it to the negative 1 power, so we're not even going to say that. Even though that's what it looks like, I know it's confusing. We're going to take a moment to get over the fact that this might be confusing, and we're going to remember that it always means arc sine, means we're finding the angle, okay? So in example two, it says find the degree measure, so we're still in degrees mode, that's good. And it says that we're going to have an acute angle correct to three decimal places. Now, when you are doing this in your calculator, your calculator is going to find an acute angle. It's going to deal a lot with reference angles, and this is something we're going to unpack as we go through the examples, okay? And so it's saying find theta, the angle, and that angle equals arc cosine. Remember, that's how we say this. Put a little arc in front of it. Arc cosine. I'm going to write it out here to the side. Arc cosine of 0 0.619. Now, if you look on your calculator, you will see this. I'm going to clear all that out. Look at where cosine is and look right above it in blue, or it might be yellow depending on which calculator you have, but it'll be the same color as the second key. Whether that's blue or yellow, depends. All right, so we are going to hit the second key, hit cosine, and this is doing arc cosine of, and in our example, it was 0.619. Okay, and what this is finding is it's finding an angle although there are many angles that are coterminal to this, okay, and that, and that also have this as a reference angle, that will give us this ratio. So I want you to watch something. I'm going to check my answer. I'm going to do cosine of this angle, okay, 51 degrees and some change. And instead of typing all that in, I am going to just go second answer, which hopefully you've seen before. Um, you should have seen that before. <clears throat> second negative will bring back the last answer. 
and I will get the same ratio. So this is essentially just going backwards from what we've already done, okay? And the directions here tell us to round to three decimal places. Sometimes when we're doing arc cosine or arc sine, the directions will tell us to round to the nearest whole number for degree, um, but we're going to follow the directions here and we're going to round to three decimal places. So that's going to be 51.757 degrees. And this is still an approximation. It's not exact because we had to round. Don't forget your degree symbol. Okay, so part B, same thing. Notice here they wrote the word arctan. This would be the same thing as the symbol of tan with a negative one there of 2.471. This is saying tangent of some angle equals the decimal or approximates to the decimal 2.471. What is that angle? Okay, and that's what our calculator is finding. Okay, so let's type this in. To do arctan, we would do second tan. And we're going to type in the decimal, 2.471. And we get the angle 67.967 degrees. And again, if I were to do tan of my answer, I will get the ratio that I started with. Okay, so 67.967 degrees. All right, <coughs> it's all good, but there's something that's going to be interesting when we do these three problems. Okay, so secant. This is essentially arc secant of 3.156. Now, I want to show you something that's wrong that most students would try to do first. I'm not going to write it down, but I'm going to show it to you on my calculator. What most students would do is they'd take in everything we've done and they'd say, I know what to do. You are going to do 1 divided by arc. Let me clear this out. You're going to do 1 divided by arc cosine of, and let me repeat that this is wrong, and you will see why in just a minute. All right, so first of all, we get an error. And if I hit go to, it's going to tell us that the problem is with my input of arc cosine. Now remember what when we take arc cosine of a number, it's saying that you're taking cosine of an angle and you're and you're getting 3.156. Now does it make sense that cosine of any angle would equal a fraction that would e be the equivalent of this decimal, something that's over one basically, if you remember this conversation. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we shouldn't get anything over 1 because the adjacent is always going to be smaller than the hypotenuse. Okay, so first off, we can never take arc cosine of 3.156. We can only take arc cosine of numbers that are less than 1, okay, or between 0 and 1, positive or negative. All right, so this is telling us this is not the way to do this. The main reason, though, why this is actually wrong is because you're not wanting to flip the arc cosine, you're wanting to flip the ratio. So if I go back and look at the problems where we did 1 divided by on the first page, okay, we were actually flipping the ratio. We were finding the ratio or the decimal tangent of 56 and then we were taking the reciprocal of that and your calculator did that all in one step. Here though, okay, we're given that and that number, that decimal, that ratio is what we want to take the reciprocal of. Okay, so in this problem we are going to take arc cosine of something. It's going to be the reciprocal of this decimal. Now if this number had been a fraction, oops, let me back that up. This number had been a fraction, we could have just easily taken the reciprocal by flipping the numerator and denominator. Since it was a decimal, I need to take the reciprocal by doing 1 divided by. OK, 
Okay, 1 divided by 3.156 will be a number that's less than 1, and I will be able to take arc cosine of that. Okay, so let's go ahead and type this in now, the correct way. So this is the wrong way, let's clear that out. And let's type in arc cosine 1 divided by 3.156. And we will get an angle, 71.527. And let's just go ahead and check our work here. If we did this correctly, I should be able to take cosine of this and take the reciprocal, like how I did on the first page, or on the first slide, which is at the top of your page. So let's go ahead and do that. 1 divided by cosine of the answer. And there we go. We get the same decimal. So <clears throat> it may be tempting for some of you just to memorize where the 1 divided by goes. And that's not bad if you're really good at memorizing. But if you can understand why the 1 divided by goes either inside or outside, that will be longer lasting. And that's what I want to encourage you to do. You always want to do 1 divided by the ratio. If you're given the ratio and trying to find the angle, that's why the 1 divided by goes on the inside. Um, if you're ever doing this though and you get an error, um, it's because you probably because you put the one divided by in the wrong place. All right, so our answer here is 71.527 degrees. Let's write that down. There we go. So again, on D, <clears throat> they're wrote it out the other way, arc cosecant of 1.982. If I tried to take arc sine of this ratio, it will give me an error, and that's because I need to flip the ratio or the decimal. All right, so let's write that out. Sine, or arc sine, sorry, of 1 divided by 1.982. If you're not understanding why I'm doing 1 divided by, where I'm doing that, I want you to write that question down and ask me in class and I will address it, maybe explain it a different way. Okay, so let's type this in. Arc sine 1 divided by 1.982. We get 30.301. We correctly round to three decimal places the thousandths place will be a 1. So 30.301 degrees is our answer. Okay, last problem. This is the third way to write it, is just to go ahead and write it out as an equation. And just a reminder, it's not really asking us to do anything different than the rest of this example. Just write, giving us the problem set in a different way. It's saying find the angle if the ratio is 0.684. Okay, so with cotangent we want to do arc tan and we want to take the reciprocal of the decimal or of the ratio. So arc tan of 1 divided by 0.684. You have to be careful with tangent, or particularly cotangent, is because you could accidentally make a mistake here with the 1 divided by, and it won't pick up on it, because there's no rule about tangent and cotangent being more or less than 1. Okay, so the decimal was 0.684. So we have 55.628 degrees. Okay, so let's look at the next example now. This changes things up just a little bit. <coughs> now it's saying use a calculator in radian mode to find the indicated function value correct to three decimal places. So it's, it's the, basically we're going to do the same types of examples, but we are in radian mode. Okay, 
It also says before you punch it into your calculator, determine whether your answer will be positive or negative. All right. Um, so right here, 2.9. Notice that there's no pi next to it. Radians, many times, most of the time, have pi, and it's written in fraction form. This is not. So this is not supposed to be 2.9 pi. This really is supposed to be just 2.9. Now before I show you how to do this on the calculator, I want you to think about where 2.9 will be. All right. So off here to the side, I'm going to draw our unit circle again in radians, but instead of writing pi over here, I'm going to write the decimal approximation of pi that we know. So what would be about halfway? It would be 1.5 um, you know, about. We know it's not exactly that because this is not exactly 3, but I think this is going to be close enough. Okay, 2 pi would be, you know, twice that, so it would be, you know, about 6.28. Well, that would be close. And then so you could think of, well, what's about here? So, Let's, um, I think this is good enough, because this is really just to determine to make sure you guys understand that we're doing the same thing we did, except these numbers are not having pi in them. We're, they're all about approximation. So 2.9, which quadrant would 2.9 be in? It would be in quadrant 2. And so is cosecant positive or negative in quadrant 2? Okay, it's positive, so... Our answer should be positive there. Let's see if that checks out. All right, secant of 3.89. Now, I didn't even find this number right here, all right? But 3.89 is just barely past pi, so that's in the third quadrant. Is secant positive or negative in that quadrant? It's negative, okay? What about tangent of 4.2? All right, so I thought we were gonna luck out and not have to find this one, but we are. And since we're dealing with the calculator, um, you could do one and a half um, pi, um, or you still could probably find, figure out um, which, you know, which quadrant 4.2 is in, um, and see that it's going to be in the third quadrant. Um, right here in the middle should be a little bit closer to 5 than 4.2, um, so since tangent's positive, we get a positive. Definitely though, you could use your calculator and type it in. Let's just go ahead and do that just to be thorough. Let's type in 3 pi over 2. I kind of like to do these things without the calculator as much as possible um, because it gets your brain back used to figuring it out instead of just being handed to you. Now all of these are abouts, okay? And so again, 4.2, definitely on the left side here in quadrant three, that's why it's positive. All right, so let's go to our calculator, let's change it to radian mode, and let's do these problems the way we did the other ones. Okay, so cosecant of 2.9, remember that this would be one divided by sine of 2.9. Don't put in a pi there. Now, what was given to you could have been something with pi in it, and then you would type that in. But if it's not there, don't put it in there just for fun. All right, so clear that out. Go to your mode and go back to radian. <coughs> and so let's type that in. 1 divided by sine of 2.9. And there we go, 4.1797, so 1 point, or sorry, 0 0.180. And notice that our answer was positive, how, like how we predicted. Okay, secant of 3.89, this would be 1 divided by cosine of 3.89. Now we predicted that this would give us a negative number, so let's see if that checks out. 1 divided by cosine 3.89. And it did. 
negative 1.365. Okay, the last one is pretty straightforward because it's not a reciprocal trig, it's just plain old tangent. So tangent of 4.2. Sometimes we get carried away with the one divided by and we want to stick it in there when it's not supposed to go. Okay, so we got 1.778. And again, our answer was positive. Okay. So this is how you take approximate values, not exact because we rounded, um, in radian, radian mode. Now notice I didn't put degrees because that would be degrees mode. You could write the word radians after each of these. If you don't though, it is implied and so you don't have to, although you could write an R or write radians, um, but definitely you would not write degrees. Okay, example four. This is the backwards. This is finding the angle. Even though we're in radians, it's still an angle measure. Um, find the radian measure of the acute angle, theta, correct to three decimal places. Okay, so arc secant of 2.712. Remember, we don't have arc secant button, but we do have an arc cosine. Okay, and this is where you wanted to do one divided by your decimal or your ratio. When I say decimal or ratio, I'm talking about the same thing here. Okay, sometimes it's written as a fraction, sometimes it's written as a decimal. Arc cosine 1 divided by 2.712. Let's type that in. Still in radians mode. Oops, got to make sure we get that arc in there. Second cosine. Two point seven. This is at the top of the back page, by the way, if you have not yet figured that out. Oh, what did I do wrong? I forgot the one divided by. So I'm going to show you something here. Just take this as a teaching moment. If I hit second enter, that'll bring up the last line. Many of you know how to do this, but not everybody. And then you can insert by hitting second delete. This will save you from having to retype everything. Then we get 1.193. Okay, this is a radian measure. We don't have to write radians after it. I realized earlier <clears throat> I was kind of getting ahead of myself. This is your, let me go back up to example three to clarify something. I think I misspoke. On example three, I had said something about these being in radians and that was wrong. Our 2.9, our 3.893, and our 4.2, like how I explained at the beginning, those are the radian measures. These answers are our decimals or our ratios. In example four, we're given those decimal ratios and we're finding the radian measure, okay, 1.193. You could put radians after as your units, although you don't have to conventionally. Um, this is okay, it's okay to leave that part off. All right, let's look at part B. What do we have to remember about arc cotan or arc secant, arc cosecant? You have to remember to do 1 divided by the ratio, not 1 divided by arc cotan. So we got to do arc tan 1 divided by 1.769. Okay, so let's type that in. There we go, 0.5145 or 0.515. Okay, last problem. 
this right here written a different way, it's the same as saying, well, what is the arc sine of 0.627? Don't even have to worry about a 1 divided by here. When we go to type that in, we get 0.678. And again, we could put radians after this, or we could leave our answer as it is.